All right, so now we're on the automation. So I used two types of automation here. I used clip automation and I used fader automation. So, and that's pretty much it. So everything that was um, automation wise was pretty much affecting volume or gain at some certain stage in the, in the mix, but I didn't use any automation for EQs or compressors or anything like that. I felt everything was doing its job pretty well. So clip automation is represented by the red and it's only really represented on this one particular track. And the files that you get that you've downloaded already have this red clip automation embedded into them. So you don't actually have to worry about that um, clip automation because that what I'm doing with that clip automation, I'm actually adjusting the levels of the, the sound in the clip itself. So it's going pre effects bin. It's, it's going into this effects bin even before it touches these plugins here. So this was me just kind of, you know, trying to level out the, the audio a little bit. There were some parts that were kind of, you know, more quiet or more loud. And instead of using a compressor or something to, to even those levels out, I just used that clip automation just to get a more consistent, cohesive sound going into the effects bin and then use the effects bin to start toning and shaping the sound. Now with the white automation, uh, which is the, the fader, the automation for the fader, um, I used it in a couple different instances. Uh, there were still some parts even coming out of the effects bin uh, that needed to be uh, accentuated a little bit, made a little bit louder, made a little bit quieter. Uh, and also I used it to drop down some of the S's and the T's and the plosives and all that stuff. So I'll, uh, I'll kind of show you what it looks like when it, when it affects the, the S's and the, the plosives. And if you look down here where the solo track is, you can see the fader. You'll see the fader moving with the S's. And also in this particular take here, I'll just play this whole verse section here. And you'll see like as his verse was kind of getting towards the end of it, it just felt like it needed a little bit more volume to kind of finish that section off. So what I can do is I can um, enable the, I'll disable the, the automation and then I'll en enable it and then I'll let you hear what's going on. Let it flow from the heart in which you gave it Though it's nice to know that someone's there for whom you save it for Today will be the last day you've decided, yeah Alright, so now let me turn on the automation and you'll see the fader start jumping around let it flow from the heart in which you gave it Though it's nice to know that someone's there for whom you save it for Today will be the last day you've decided, yeah So yeah, that's pretty much it. Just tried to take out a little bit of those S's that and the plosives that the the ds or wasn't able to catch and then also you know make things in certain sections a little bit louder a little bit quieter depending on you know the mood of the song at that moment in time if it felt like it needed to be pulled back a bit or if it needed to feel felt like it needed to be pushed forward a little bit and you know that's kind of what i did uh, let me zoom this out and then i'll extend this here on the vocal and then I'll let you kind of take a look at it. Unfortunately, I couldn't provide the, the automation. So if you want, you can try to maybe pause the video or something and and try to see kind of what's going on in each section. If you want, you can copy it. Or you can do, like I said, I'd recommend you just doing on your own. Decide what you think sounds better because, you know, we all hear differently. So whatever I did might maybe doesn't quite make sense. To what you want to hear so you have to do your own thing make it sound good to you all right so that's pretty much it if you want to see more just unpause the video so this is the automation for the guitar i used a couple of pre-fader automations here or sorry clip uh, clip gains here and this is just because there's a couple transient parts on the guitar uh, that needed to be pulled back a bit and you know it is what it is. There's lots of transients going on here, but for whatever reason, those two parts need to be pulled back. And then you can also see 
uh, these little volume boosts here uh, every so often. So basically, this would be a section of him singing right here. Let me highlight it. All this highlight air is him singing, and then all of a sudden, he stops singing. So then the guitar comes in. Let me... His vocal, no, it's not so. So I'll, I'll play. I'll see what you mean. So the reason why I boost that up is because now that the vocal is gone, it almost feels like the music needs a little bit of a boost just to kind of fill in a little bit of that space that that vocal was taking up. And I'll, I'll let you hear what that sounds like. Of course, you're right again. Today will be the last day I've decided. So then when he comes back in and starts singing, then the volume kind of pulls back again. So that way the guitar can get out of the way and the vocal can start to, to take over uh, the most amount of room in the mix. And then all of a sudden it pulls back up as soon as he stops singing, like over here. My time has been a waste. So these are things that if you're listening to the song, you don't notice them. You're not going to hear him like, oh, my God, the guitar is so much louder. You know, that's not really the case. This is just slight little boosts every so often or slight little pullbacks every so often just so that there's a certain feeling or emotion that um, makes a little bit more sense. So I think this was the course when he gets really loud with his vocals. And you can see I kind of did a little, um, I guess, like a little fade. So as the course went on, it got louder and louder and louder, and then it dropped off back into the verse. So, Dan, like I said, these things aren't meant to be, you're not supposed to notice them, but you're supposed to, they're supposed to add to the emotional feel of the song. And that's kind of why I did it. So again, I'll kind of put this in the screen so you can see it. And if you want, you can pause the video and you can see what's going on. And then you can try to mimic something. So it's basically, I'll break it down so you can understand a little bit better. So in the intro, he's not singing over here. So the guitar is a little bit louder. Then he starts singing, it gets quieter. He st stops singing, it gets louder. Starts singing, it gets quieter. Starts singing, and so on. This section is the chorus here. So he is singing, so it is slightly louder than the verses, but I kind of made it go up and up and up so that it feels like the chorus is kind of building as it goes along. And then I bring it down for the verse, stop singing, goes up, start singing, goes down, and then so on. And then the chorus just comes back in over here. So I did the same fade and then out. So, you know, you get creative, do whatever you want. Just kind of giving you some ideas. Okay, so let's see what part this was. Okay, so this is the high vocal. So this is when he's singing from the chorus were really high so there's just a couple parts in here that I felt were getting slightly out of hand even after all the processing so I just took the volume fader and just pulled them down on those two parts where I felt like he was getting out of hand now with the harmonies um, there's nothing really too special about this this was just me automating I was making things louder or quieter based on how I felt they should fit in the mix so I didn't want them to stand out. I didn't want them to be too quiet, but I wanted them to kind of fit in with the vocals nicely. So that was just me kind of, it's more of a corrective measure. It's too loud, so I pulled it back a little bit. It's too quiet, so I push it up a little bit. So that's it for the automation. Oh, I almost forgot the cello. So with the cello, it's, um, I'd say it's kind of a combination between the guitar and the vocals. Like a lot of these these uh, automation fades were because the cello was it was played live, so he got he got very dynamic and he got quiet and he got really dynamic and you know all that stuff adds to the emotion of the song, but it overpowered the vocals at the same time. So I had to use this automation to kind of correct all that stuff and this probably took me the longest out of all the automation because it was literally listening to the song oh it's too loud there pull it down oh it's too quiet pull it up that's too you know and i just kept going along and kept doing that until everything made sense so when he had you know crescendos or whatever and it swelled up and i had to make sure that 
the peak of that swell was you know loud enough that you could feel the impact but not too loud that it started to get into the way of the vocals so you know that's pretty much all it is again just look at the screen kind of see what i did uh you know make your own best judgments but again unfortunately i can't provide the automation for you but you know it's um something that you know you can learn on your own and you can practice and experiment and that's always a good thing all right so the final part is the master bus so probably already know that I'm a firm believer of keeping it simple on the master bus I felt like I did that this time though I added in something that I haven't done in a very long time which is a form of tape saturation or something you know like I know there's a lot of analog people out there don't like don't like to hear the term tape sap saturation alongside the word plug-in but um, unfortunately that's the only other thing that I can it's the only thing I can reference it as because that's you know that's what it's referred to as so I use this free saturation plugin. I honestly wasn't going to use this initially. I just really stumbled across it as I was trying to find something. I wanted to add a little bit more um, high end, more high mid range into the into the track, and uh, I couldn't find an EQ that that I liked that did that. So I kind of just you know opened this thing. I was going through the presets. I can't. I stumbled on the the high quality tape, and I started playing with the saturation. And initially, I had it at 45, and as I was working on this section of the video, I realized that I actually liked it better around 30, 32. So um, some of the stuff in the previous videos was used with it on 45. Um, I actually sent out the, um, uh, what do you call it, the preset on 45, but if you want, you can turn it down to 30 or you can leave it at 45 you you decide what you like but i just decided that you know after listening to it again and pulling it back a bit that it actually sounded a little bit better on 30 than as opposed to 45 so so that was really the only setting that i use on this everything else is the same and um and yeah this tended to brighten up the track a little bit you know how i wanted it to and uh, it sounded better than the eq so i went with it so essentially I'm using it like an EQ, but I know it is adding some other stuff to it, you know, harmonics or whatever. Next, I do have an EQ. I cut out some of the low end around 37 hertz. Uh, there was a little bit of, you know, tiny bit of low rumble. Just, just clean it up a little bit. And last, I had this limiter. And uh, again, I wasn't using it to chop off the peaks. I was really just using it to boost the gain. That's all it is. I was just trying to increase the volume on the channel, and this did it. And I don't even really think it's hitting the the uh, the threshold that much. If it is, it might be a little bit. But this was just to bring it up to overall loudness, and that's it. Um, I don't really think I changed anything on this, to be honest with you. Uh, although I did use fast reaction, fast attack, um, and I guess it is a fast release as well. Makeup gain is where it normally is. Threshold all the way to the left. Increment ratio all the way to the left. So it's basically not even on. Like There's almost no ratio on here at all. But it does have a clip prevention on here. So if it does get to the point of reaching zero, which I tried to stay away from, but if there is a peak or two that hits zero, it'll prevent it from clipping. So when I just drive the input all the way up to 9.3, set the output to negative 1, and that's it. So I'll turn everything off and I'll turn it on, and you'll hear the difference. From the heart in which you gave it, though it's nice to know that someone's there for whom you save it for. Today will be the last day you decided. Okay, so that's it. So hopefully you learned something in this series. Uh, I definitely went over a lot. Uh, there's a lot of footage. Put a lot of time into this. I honestly didn't think it was going to take me this long, but it took me a long, long time to do it. So I really hope you do like it.
Um, but at the same time, if there is things that you think that I can improve on or you want to see in the future, if you have any ideas, do, do, please, please let me know. Uh, write a comment below, send me a message, whatever. Thumbs up, like, all that stuff. Like I said in the past, it really does help uh, the channel. Um, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at Modern Mixing. And um, I have two other series that I'm going to be doing, so stay tuned for those. And uh, I look forward to talking to you in the future. Episode of my 15 self divided by my hand divine across my arm. Of course, you ride again. Today will be the last day I've decided. Yeah. Cause all my time has been.